3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, is a process of generating or making 3D objects from 3D models generated on the computer. The creation of a 3D printed object is usually done following certain steps and procedures to make sure everything will be done properly. In the additive 3D printing process, a 3D model or an object is created layer by layer until we reach a final result we give to the 3D printer. 3D printing does not happen magically, on the contrary, it is simple in its concept because each one of the layers that the 3D printer generates can be seen as a very thin sliced horizontal cross section of the final object. You can think of 3D printing as building 3D models, and you can think of the traditional method of building models for manufacturing as sculpting. Because 3D printing is about adding, but the other is about subtracting. And it is actually called subtractive manufacturing, which is all about cutting or hollowing out pieces of metal or plastic. 3D printing is actually a fantastic way or method for allowing normal people or artists to bring their creation to life, and it is becoming better and bigger than ever before. How 3D printing works 3D printers were initially used for the production of prototypes and models, but today the production of everyday objects and real component parts is entirely possible. 3D printing is a process that includes going through multiple steps and procedures, and the time it will take to convert something on your computer to a 3D object in real life will depend, of course, on the complexity of what you're creating and how you will be able to 3D print it. The process of 3D printing actually goes through three major steps. First, creating the 3D objects you want to print, editing and fixing errors for better 3D printing experience, and finally slicing your 3D model and the actual printing. 3D Modeling and Design This process can be the simplest or the most complicated part of 3D printing depending on what you want to print. If you are completely new to 3D printing and you want to try out something real quick, or if this thing is gonna work for you or not, you can just create a simple object like a box or a pyramid in a free software such as Blender or FreeCAD and export it to continue further with the other processes. But if you want to print something complicated like character or complicated mechanical or architectural 3D model, you will need to have a solid understanding and experience about how 3D design and modeling software work. If you don't want to spend a lot of time creating something in 3D modeling and design software for 3D printing, or if you don't have a lot of experience or the necessary experience to create them in the first place, then you can actually have them without actually doing the work yourself. It is possible because there are a lot of websites where you can find free or paid ready to print 3D models, websites like Sketchfab that offer 3D models for different purposes including 3D printing. This video is brought to you by Sketchfab, a platform for buying and selling 3D models online. Their store has a lot of high quality models to choose from using a great model inspector. Links in the description. This can be a fantastic time saver if your work depends on getting certain things printed and you don't have the necessary time or experience to do it yourself. These websites also have nice printable 3D models for characters, animals and so on. You can also use 3D scanning to obtain your 3D model that you are going to print. Basically, a 3D scan is a digital presentation of the object or person you are scanning. During the 3D scanning process, you are capturing the shape of an item whether it be a simple object like a box or a complex shape like a trunk of a tree with all its details or even a head of a human being, which is one of the common reasons why 3D scanning is being used. You can use 3D scanning applications on your tablet or mobile phone or even a proper 3D scanning device. The way it works is simple. The sensors of the individual device collect data related to the shape or the form of the object and the depth plus the color of the item you are 3D scanning and then they will form the 3D file on your computer. After that, you will convert your 3D scan into a 3D file that you can edit with 3D modeling software that people use to print their 3D models. You can also use 3D scanning as a cornerstone or a start for something complicated you want to create. Editing and preparing 3D printing files After you finish modeling or designing your 3D object, you must export it to a slicing software. But before you do this, you must make sure that your 3D model meets certain requirements for 3D printing because you don't want to face any problems when the 3D printer starts working. Some of these things we're going to talk about can be done in 3D modeling software like Blender, FreeCAD, SketchUp, Inventor and so on. But there are also specialized software that can help you to fix your models before they go into slicing software. Number one, make sure that your 3D model is watertight because 3D printers can get confused if you have a leak in your model. 
essentially this would reduce the model to a two-dimensional shell, so make sure to close your model. Of course you can still have model with holes in them, but make sure that the surfaces are continuous and closed. Number two, make sure your 3D model is manifold. This concept is related to the concept of water tightness. It is a mathematical term describing object surfaces. Basically, it confirms that the surface can possibly exist in reality because if it can't mathematically exist, it won't. There are a lot of things going on with this concept, but the main requirement being each edge should be connected to exactly two faces. As we said before, a lot of 3D software has support for testing manifoldness. If the one you are using doesn't, try MeshFab or MeshMixer, which are free software. And in addition to testing whether your model is manifold, this software can actually test other important things that can help editing and preparing 3D printing files. Another important part of this stage of 3D printing is checking wall thickness and model size. You need to see whether your model confirms the printer minimum thickness or the thickest part it can print, and will it fit the print area. Each printer has its own minimum and maximum model sizes. Be sure to check them out. There is also the concept of overhang. This is a bit more technical than the other ones, but some printers, especially FDM printers, have a limit to the angle of some faces. A large overhang will require adding support material. Again, it all depends on the type of 3D printer you will use. Finally, you will need to respect polygon threshold, which is the maximum number of polygons that the 3D printer can handle. Keep the 3D printer resolution in mind when deciding on the polygon count, and details that are below the resolution will not be printed anyway, so don't bother sending them to the 3D printer. A good thing to do is to stay below 1 million triangles. And you can also use mesh decimation software to remove unneeded details while still preserving your model shape. Again, software such as MeshLab and MeshMixer can help a lot if the software you are using right now doesn't already offer these tools. Slicing and printer control. Slicing is dividing a 3D model into hundreds or thousands of horizontal layers. Some printers actually have a built-in slicer and will let you feed the STL file directly. Slicing enables the user to cut large models into small parts and sometimes you need to manipulate and place each part individually. Cutting your models into parts will allow you to print a full-sized object without being limited to the size of the printer or the printer's printing area, because if you don't have a printer with the necessary size, you will have to do this. Sometimes your 3D object will be uneven, especially if it is an organic shape, and cutting it into separate parts will create flat surfaces on which your model will rest, meaning that you don't have to use any support to hold an otherwise strongly shaped 3D model upright. When your file is sliced, it will be ready to be fed to a 3D printer. This can be done via USB, SD card, or the internet. Your sliced 3D model is now ready to be 3D printed layer by layer. The learning curve of 3D printing. Like anything that is worthwhile, learning to 3D print objects depend on your ability to understand concepts, how to use tools, and patience too to keep moving forward when facing problems. Right now 3D printing is still in its infancy, and there are a lot of things that will make it easier over time. One thing I learned from acquiring new skills over the years is the more you will be able to do with the skill you are learning, and the more freedom it will give you, the harder it will be. A normal printer will allow you to print papers only, but a 3D printer is your gateway to creating objects that you can think of and realize with precision. If you are a beginner who wants to 3D print something very simple, it won't be a problem. But if you want to print characters, monsters, or highly detailed sculpts, you will need to learn computer-aided design software such as Fusion 360, FreeCAD, or 3D sculpting software such as Blender or ZBrush to be able to visualize your ideas. Then you will need to learn slicing software and learn the ins and outs to make progress through the process of trial and error. When you become used to the workflow of 3D printing and how things work, you will still have to practice because it is inevitable, since you will run to problems as you make more progress, and this is when you need to be patient the most. You might ask for help if you don't know how to do something, because the 3D printing community is becoming even larger since the industry is projected to grow real quickly in the next 10 years or so, which is a good thing if you want to start because it might change your life. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.